Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Asynchronicity and the Internet Archive. I get a lot of phone calls. I don't answer all of them. I'm not being antisocial. I am being smart with my time. By not always answering the phone, I am protecting my workday. To write 50 books, 25,000 articles, and 2 million words a year requires me to draw a bright and hard line with my time. And sometimes people get angry with me. And to them, I reply, I understand. The problem with the phone is you really cannot effectively multitask when you're in a conversation. I know people who try, and they fail. If I am on the phone with someone, and I hear them typing in the background, I always say, It's okay. I'll wait for you to finish. And they say, No, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm almost done. Go ahead, go ahead. Keep talking. And I calmly reply, No. I'll wait. Is it so wrong of me to want their full attention? After all, they called me. I didn't call them. And I would like for them to focus on our conversation and not on the conversation they're clearly having behind my back, in front of my ear. Telephone conversations are anti asynchronous. And that's a problem in the modern age because you have to stop your own swirling space and time to rest and then leap into the low velocity of ordinary time and sync up with another human being. Now, that is so mechanical and old and copper line and springs and gears and cords and coiled rope. Time no longer compresses in synchronization. Time itself is now asynchronous everywhere where everything happens simultaneously on different timelines. Computers and the internet and email all gifted us with the imagination exploding sensation of asynchronicity. And now that asynchronicity has been unleashed upon us, we will never go back to the Pony Express, where horse and rider fell as one against the hardening plat to deliver bad news in paper. You know, our bodies are the original non-timekeepers. Yes, the blood flows with the heartbeat and not against it. But sometimes you move and twist and bend. And that flow is asynchronously suspended in time. And yet you do not die. You continue to move. And your body catches up and resyncs, But only as it sees fit. Have you ever had a thought and your mouth can't catch up with your brain? That is asynchronicity in action. Your electronic brain cannot be bothered with the wooden togs in your jaw. And in many ways, Alzheimer's is a heightened sense of asynchronicity where vital parts of the body begin to decay and disassociate with any sort of timeline at all. And instead of independently working a thousand timelines, the mind begins to become overwhelmed 
with keeping track of it all. And sensation and thought and imagination all begin to fold. Here's a lesson for you in asynchronicity that recently happened to me. In 2008, I published an article by a fine author and friend, Kathakali Chatterjee. She wrote a devastating story about having Rocky Mountain spotted fever, the dreaded black measles, as a child in India, and how her grandfather refused to give up on her and her impending death. And he saved her by finding the right doctor in the right synchronous time. So through many blog moves and condensations and server changes and this and that, her important article was somehow disappeared, lost, devastating. And for about six years, I have been working hard to find a copy of that article so I can republish it. I keep multiple copies of everything. But that article was gone. I asked friends and colleagues, co-workers, other authors on staff, and even Katha herself if anyone had a copy of her story, and the answer was, we don't have it. Nothing. What author doesn't keep a copy of her work, Katha? So, what to do? I did every Google search I could imagine to find that article. Nothing. I searched the Internet Archive's Wayback Machine. Still nothing. I did not give up. I kept trying and looking and... nothing. Then, one day, the actual day I am recording this human meme podcast, I found an old article we had published of Cathas, still published, and there hiding in plain sight in the text of that article was a link to her black measles article. Hmm. What to do? So now I had the original publication URL from urbansemiotic.com and that is one of the things that David Bowles' blogs used to be before we became BowlesBlogs.com. But any urban semiotic article link you find will take you right back to Bowles Blogs. So I copied that full original urban semiotic URL and I plugged it directly into an archive.org search window and I clicked, and the Internet Archive Wayback Machine found two copies of her article. I could not believe it. What a find! What fantastical luck! I quickly donated 100 American dollars to the Internet Archive in great thanks. They need money to preserve the us of us. And now we have proof. I also copied the entire article from the Wayback Machine and pasted it into a new bowlsblogs.com article template and then published, republished that article as if it were still September 8, 2008, at 6.59 p.m. It all worked, 
everything fell and came together. And now you may read Katha's article online right now. Go to bowlsblogs.com and do a search for Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. You'll see. The rest of the story is there. And so it goes. What you think is gone forever and lost. Oh, and Katha didn't want to rewrite that massive article for me, and I understand why. And so will you when you read her harrowing story. It's hard to relive it again. Plus, her original article was over 2,500 words. That is a lot to recall, reproduce, and redo. So, what you think is gone and lost forever never was, and yet still is. Because I was searching in my time, in my specter, and archive.org was retrieving and storing, asynchronously, in its own time and space and pace. Over the years, I tried and tried again to get some sort of search term that would be recognized for Katha's article to pop up for me as a search return in the Wayback Machine, because I knew her article had to be there somewhere because all of our articles are in there somewhere. But any set of search terms I used came up blank. And I'm a pretty good Internet searcher. The Internet Archive was happy to release its find to me if I could only find the right terms to get it out of there. I'm in my time. Wayback Machine is in its time. Asynchronous. How can we ever, if only momentarily, merge our conflicting time species to get a proper call and return. Well, now we know. At least in this case, the key was copying and pasting the full URL of the original article into archive.org. And blammo! The gift was given. The given gifted. The favor returned. The return favored. And what a grand thrill it was for me to finally crack the code of memory and longing and archivals in amber. The information was there all along in the Wayback Machine, sitting there, since 2008, and waiting for me. All I had to know was how to ask the right question to get the right answer. And I did. So that's a valuable lesson in asynchronicity. We all spin in our own times, doing the things we must. But every once in a while, it's okay to stop for a second and hook into someone else's moment in time to find out what they know on their terms, not yours. And the rewards for going outside of yourself and tempering your expectation with understanding and not fear is the reward of finding what you thought was lost forever, but was always just right there. Thank you for listening. 
be a human meme.